सुलभ शांति अ वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून टू ऑल द ऑनरेबल गेस्ट एंड द डिस्टिंग्विश्ड ऑडियंस टू इनिशिएट दिस प्रोग्राम आई वुड लाइक टू रिक्वेस्ट नित्या मैम कुमार सर एंड द पंकज जैन सर मोनिका मैम डॉक्टर शिवा कामी जी टू काइंडली कम एंड टू पे देयर ट्रिब्यूट टू अवर बिलवेड लेट डॉक्टर बिंदेश उपाध्यक्ष जी बिकॉज होम whose vision and whose blessings are always with us and he must be seeing from the heaven honorable mr dirja patnagar ma'am now i request honorable mrs neeja patnaga ma'am honorable mr pankaj jain sir honorable mr kumar dilip sir dr shiva kami muthu swami ma'am to kindly take their seat on the dais please monica ma'am I extend my warm welcome to all of you on this momentous occasion the release of the report combating the silence from menarche to menopause a comprehensive report on menstrual hygiene management in india that the team sulab has worked through over the length and breadth of the country to bring forth insightful findings on the vital subject concerning the well-being of all the women and the girls across the country to initiate this program firstly i would like all uh, everybody to kindly please stand on their place to observe one minute silence for the peace of eternal soul thank you hoping that our founder sir dr patak must be seeing from the heaven and blessing this occasion now following our sulab traditional way i request all of you to kindly stand on your place for our sulab prayer we'll start with the sulab prayer
the release of the report combating the silence from menarche to menopause a comprehensive report of menstrual hygiene management in india under the aegis of sulap sanitation mission foundation the study is significant for representing the policy initiatives of government of india under the leadership of honorable prime minister shri narendra modi ji on a critical aspects of women and girl health the report will serve as an important tool for the policy makers and the other stakeholders addressing the existing knowledge and action gaps in the immensely crucial sector for the development of the fabric of the country and on this note ladies and gentlemen i would like to invite honorable shri pankaj jain ji is retired former secretary government of india and honorary controller general sulab international social service organization and sulab international museum of toilet to kindly present the welcome address and setting the tone please friends well welcome you uh, all of you to this uh, today's function of release of the report on menstrual hygiene management in india i would like to say that today is a new milestone in the history of sulab reform movement this uh, movement was started in 1970 by the late founder dr bindeshwar pathak a padma bhushana body with the formation of the sulab shaucharya shikshan sansthan in patna in 1970 and over the time it has uh, changed its name to sulab international social service organization keeping in mind its international character and keeping in mind its ever widening scope and coverage because now we are in 1689 towns in india in 25 states and four uts and we have a volunteer workforce of over 50000 so that's the enormity of the reform movement we are not only now restricted to toilets we run a school for the offspring of the ex scavengers and the downtrodden and the poor we also run a iti a recognized iti where we give vocational training to the children of the ex scavengers in order to give them alternative employment to their earlier manual scavenging job we form a uh, sulab sanitation clubs we encourage it in schools to teach them the children to clean their own toilets we also have demonstration centers for pad making menstrual pad making and that's very relevant to today's topic and we are setting up self help groups in various places for actual manufacture of the uh, these uh, sanitary pads on a sustainable basis this is done out of csr and local funds a founder also a late founder chala gaya kya can you hear yeah our late founder also set up the sulab international museum of toilets which is one of the weird three toilets in the world it showcases all the toilet and sanitary practices the sanitation practices all over the world starting from indus valley civilization and all of you should if you haven't paid a visit please do it's a very lovely uh, museum and you will be uh, uh, highly delighted to see this weird museum in sulab we have also set up a water treatment plant in west bengal to clean water in a area which was having arsenic ground water now that's something which is really required i don't know if the people are aware in the whole indo gangetic plain you have this arsenic and fluoride so people there where we have done this project they could not take the ground water because it was full of arsenic and they had blackened you know hands and all that so we treated the local pond water 
and uh, we sell it at a very reasonable price, much less than the RO water you get in the market. In addition to this, you know, I'm talking about the entire solar reform movement. It's not only toilets. So in addition to this, we look after widows in Vrindavan by giving them monthly remuneration and also participating in their festivals with them. We also have a biogas plant in our Delhi office. It converts the human waste into biogas, which is used for not only cooking, but also heating and generating electricity. And I don't know whether people recall that in Patna, for a stretch of five to eight kilometers, long time back, the lighting on a particular road was done through biogas. Now, this, um, in addition to creating this biogas, we, this unit also treats the black water and converts it into usable water. So that's recycling of the water. In Kabul, we have set up public toilets as well as a biogas plant. And currently, we have a demand from Ireland to set up biogas plants there. Our motto in the Sulab reform movement has been reduce, reuse, and recycle. Our twin pit toilets reduce the requirement of water by having a deep slope and also reducing the requirement of electricity and financial expenditure, which would be required if you have normal sewerage or if you have emptying regularly of the septic tanks. So we've done away with that. If you have localized absorption of the uh, human waste and the water into the soil. The twin pit uh, technology invented by Dr. Pathak is now used by government of India and all the state governments. And it is the answer for developing countries. And this is the model which has enabled government of India to achieve Swachh Bharat in five years. There is no other model which can work because all the other models are costlier. I once asked Dr. Pathak, I've been associated with him, I first met him in 25 years back, very impressed by his work. And I asked him once, why did he not patent your invention? So he said, my invention is not for sale, it is for mankind. And what a noble and pious thought. It is free for mankind. Something, something wonderful. I mean, it's, uh, it's really very, very pious. Dr. Pathak really believed in the three arts. He used to talk about circular economy. His twin pit toilets produce manure, which is reusable every time a pit dries up. And his biogas plant has shown that human waste and black water can be recycled for use. So this is how the three R's work and the circular economy works. Dr. Pathak is a true modern age Ambedkar. I mean, if you look at it, Ambedkar put a lot of provisions in the constitution of India to give equality to Dalits downtrodden, including manual scavengers. But he could not achieve all this in his lifetime, practically. Dr. Pathak achieved all this. He took the manual scavengers into the temples, which was earlier forbidden. He asked them to change to whatever caste they wanted. So Usha Chomar became Usha Sharma, and she was given a Padma Shri as a result of the social engineering. So this is social engineering to change the, the thinking of people you know, against the manual scavengers. So this is something remarkable. Absolutely remarkable. Dr. Pathak also took the scavengers to a beauty pageant. They held a beauty pageant themselves. And he took them to USA to give them wider exposure. Nobody has ever done this before. Absolutely. So this is social engineering. I would also like to compare the late founder with a modern day Gandhi. Gandhi extolled the virtue of cleanliness, saying that it is next to godliness. He always wanted to have a clean India, but Dr. Pathak achieved it through his twin pit model, which reduced the people, I mean, which stopped the people from going into outside and 
defecating and therefore creating filth, disease through flies and resulting in infant mortality and stunting and also molestation chances of women. So that has been stopped by this uh, having the toilet inside the home. Dr. Pathak and his organization in the reform movement has built 1.6 million household toilets, over 15,000 pay and use and community toilets in India, and over 20,000 school toilets. This is what initiated the Swachh Bharat actually. So with today's uh, launch of this country level report on menstrual hygiene management, this reform movement is entering into a new area of research studies and improvement in new areas of hygiene and health. And in this, you know, the first thing is knowledge. Knowledge of the ground realities is the first step to making a national policy on menstruation, uh, menstruation uh, hygiene management and its implementation, proper implementation. And hence, we have this evidence-based research report before you, which will be given to all people who have come. As we have a number of speakers who will be de dealing in great de greater depth on this subject and on the report, I would like to leave it to them to cover the subject and also in guide us for the way forward. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for briefing the sort of international technology, methodology, and the innovations of our founder, Sir Dr. Bindeshwar Pathakji, in terms of sanitation, in terms of social aspects. So definitely, sir, it's a very huge thing which sir has for ourselves. Now I request Honorable Mrs. Nirja Bhatnaga, ma'am. She's a team leader of the research project Combating the Silence from Menarche to Menopause, a comprehensive report on menstrual hygiene management in India. And I request you, ma'am, to kindly show light and uh, some details of your research element. Thank you, ma'am. So give a huge lot of applause so that the function will be in a, taken in a much better manner. Thank you. Thank you, Nigar. Thank you so much. What a day to release the report. I mean, last fortnight was celebrated globally as campaign on violence against women which ended yesterday with a Human Rights Day. And today we are here pledging for gender justice with MHM. I think nothing can be a greater moment than this. Our report, our work went ahead with the spirit of equality and justice, because that's the whole issue when we talk about menstrual hygiene. Uh, it has been stopped, it has not been given, it has been denied because of the secondary status of the women. And that's why it has never been talked about. So we are coming, that's why we have to have the sense of equity. So here our report doesn't only deal with capacity building, it takes capacity building to behavioral changes. It takes, it, it passes the journey from diversity to equity. I hope we have been able to do the full justice because my team had struggled it out for more than 14 months and 16 months on this. So, and with all the experts on the research, with the, all the expertise on the issue. So yes, here I'm going to start. And the focus of our report has been uh, stigma and shame. That has been the sh uh, actually uh, center of the discussion because all the technicalities, all the availability you can do, but how will you do something when you can't even talk about it? So stigma and the social structure, that has been dealt very delicately. We reached around, you can start. Yeah, so here the effort is to, like, you know, no issue is in silence. Every issue is very layered. Menstrual uh, hygiene is also a very layered issue because A, it, is, it belongs to women, it is for the women, then uh, comes the illiteracy, then comes the poverty, then comes the geographical situation, then comes the political situations. It has to cross all those intersectionality and then the justice can be de uh, delivered. So that has been the theme of, from where we started, the aim of our project. And it has been people-centric and participative research because unless until we don't, we don't hear 
directly from the horse's mouth, I don't think we'll be able to unearth the reality. So that has been the effort and uh, participatory research from India such that ethical context sensitive. So we have to be very context sensitive and it is in that line we have not been able to uh, reach out to certain social groups because this was our first effort. We wanted it to go very flawless and if we get into a difficult terrain that might bring in hurdles. So let us develop the expertise, let's achieve the uh, expertise and next time we will get into much difficult uh, issues. Ethnography intervention to fill up the gaps between policy and practice can be enthused because policies are there, but the implementations are hurdles. So how do we get into that? So the whole, uh, the whole aim I can say is uh, Professor Shivakami keeps telling me, Nirja policy advocacy has to happen. That's the only aim we have to have. Okay. Yeah, the statement of the purpose is the recognizing the benefits. I mean, we do have policies, right? We do have the policies and we do have many studies. When we, were start, when we started doing this, we, we looked into all the most of the studies and most of the studies has been done only till the school girls. What about the women who come out of the school and who have the thing till the menopause? So we took the age group from uh, 20 to 49 years because they are out of this, they are, they are nowhere. How do you talk to them? Where do you find them? You cannot go home to home. And what? Are they not getting menstrual issues? Are they not getting menstrual problems? So that was the critical age group. We till the menopause, watch uh, how they go through. We wanted to understand from them. So actually that is our, I can say, one of the USP in this report. For a, a hemato uh, neutral convenience, we refer to menstruating women beyond, yeah. So these are the elderly women, like if you're married, you're a delivered child, like you are elderly women. So uh, it is with that notion, because that is the notion which works at the grassroots, which works in the rural area. So it is with that notion we have the social group which has come out is the elder and aging menstruating women. So now from here on, we will address them as EAMW. So our studies, went in seven states, two districts each, so 14 districts. We took all the aspirational districts as uh, defined by the um, Niti Aayog, as defined by the Niti Aayog, but there also we went into the lowest indicators. The total blocks has been 22, uh, Gram Panchayat and Hamlets and Villages 84, and total municipal uh, corporation three. So here you can see, we have not much touched upon the urban areas. We have gone to the rural area mostly. Only three metropolitan cities has been the Ramanathpuram, Birdunagar, and uh, one place in Katihar district. So this is how we did the sampling. Uh, Assam, Bihar, Chhattisgarh, Haryana, Maharashtra, Odisha, Tamil Nadu, uh, and districts are mentioned. Prevalences, based on the prevalences, sampling has been done. Yeah, so these are the, these are the main three pillars. Emic approach has been ap adopted here. There are three pillars, participatory, wherein comes the social group of women and adolescents. Yes, field work, including being pluralistic and involved, because this work would not have been possible if we would not have reached out through our local NGOs. So we went through all the local NGOs in, uh, two, uh, in each district, two local NGOs, uh, uh, right from Bihar to Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, sorry, not Jharkhand, and Tamil Nadu and all other, Assam. Yeah, there have been seven, I will say, Niti Aayog districts. Two have been beyond that because we wanted to understand what is the situation of menstrual hygiene in a difficult places like where disaster happens. In a difficult places like where there is continuous public uproar, there's continuous uh, violence going on for some or other reason. So everything go goes on, I mean disaster happens, flood happens, drought happens, menstrual menstruation doesn't stop. It comes right after every 27 days. So how are they, those women, those rural women, those deprived women, how are they tackling it? The intersectoral, when I say it, then we have, we, we have looked at it from the lens of wash, from the lens of health, from the lens of education. 
and when we when we say uh, methodology, mixed methodology, these are the methodologies which has been used. You will get to understand the uh, volume of it when you uh, get to know the uh, respondents we have. Women and girls constitute almost half the population in India and How across to hold the world. Out of the many areas, she is our lead researcher, Bobby Luthra, and she's speaking on the approach. Sorry, worldwide and in, in, India, 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 approach, sorry, worldwide and in yeah. India, menstrual hygiene management or MHM remains a critical issue. Okay. Thank you for this technical hitch. Sorry for this technical hitch. Uh, yeah, Bobby, Dr. Bobby Luthra is has been our lead researcher. And this approach, emic evaluation approach and uh, ethnographic part, uh, approach has been brought in by her. So we felt that uh, she should be talking about it. She is not currently based in India. She is out of India. So she has sent her small message, very academic message on the video, which I'll play out for you. Start with it. Women and girls constitute almost half the population in India and across the world. Out of the many areas over which gender disparities continue to impact women and girls worldwide and in India, menstrual hygiene management or MHM remains a critical issue. In India, menstruating women and girls experience challenges in various sectors and spaces that form the arena of their everyday life, be it family, culture, education, health, the livelihood sector or workforce participation and ordinary chores. Aside from period poverty, lack of awareness and adequate access to resources and recourses under policy and public health, menstruation is a phenomenon shrouded in a culture of silence and stigma. At the start of this project, the more we conceptualized on the theme and brainstormed over it as a team, the more we realized that a special approach was needed to cover this sensitive theme in culture-centric as well as actor-centric ways. In order to reach the women, listen to their voices, and learn from them about the various sectors and spaces where they live and encounter their embodied experience of menstruation, as the lead researcher, I zeroed in on the EMIC evaluation approach, or the EEA for short. I also decided that owing both to the sensitivity as well as the scale of our research, the survey tools employed would be mixed methodology dominant and follow quantitative as well as qualitative data collection, analysis techniques, and research ethics. The EEA has three components with respect to whom to approach, where, when, and how. Employing the EEA, we collected data on actors, discourses, and practices. This helped us to conduct three kinds of analysis, actor analysis, practice analysis, and discourse analysis. Using random sampling, we approached menstruating women between the ages of 20 to 49 years by employing the tool of in-depth interviews or IDIs to collect data through menstrual practice questionnaires or the MPQs. These MPQs generated in-depth qualitative and quantitative data on menstrual materials, practices regarding using changing and disposing absorbents, myths, taboos, as well as history of diseases and treatment preferences followed by our women informants. The MPQs were area specific, that is conducted in the villages, selected for our research, and they also let us know about the levels of awareness that our informants have on the various governmental schemes and policies operational in the areas. We also surveyed select women from the districts between the ages of 20 to 49 years, that is, the same age group as that of the MPQs, the elder and the aging menstruating women, who were given the menstrual practice needs scale or the MPNS to fill up. The MPNS had a certain set of close-ended questions scaling the experience of these women 
and letting them speak about their needs during the last period or the last five to six periods in their most recent memory. The MPNS surveys took data from all over the district as opposed to the MPQ surveys which got us data from each village in our survey. What the MPQ did not collect, the MPNS strived to collect and it opened a doorway to the felt needs of real life women in real life situations. What I must say at this juncture is that both these tools, the menstrual practice questionnaire and the menstrual practice needs scares are uh, scale are the state of the art tools and techniques which are now recommended in menstrual hygiene management research and our team worked hard to adapt these to the Indian um, sample and the Indian thematic areas and sectors that we wanted to conduct research on. Nonetheless, these two were not the only tools that were employed because we wanted intersectoral data. We also interacted therefore with key actors and stakeholders at the grassroots level using the method of open-ended key informant interviews for imparting an intergenerational and holistic perspective on menstruation we also approached adolescents girls and school staff and finally the menopausal and postmenopausal women over the theme amongst ourselves we reasoned that as valuable members of community and society the eaamw do not live in a vacuum they oversee the growth and development of young adolescent girls in the care who depend upon them. Moreover, the EAMW are also caregivers and vital younger family members to the aged women around them. Therefore, we listen to the voices of this group as well. Our findings indicate that although there is a culture of silence, women are ready to speak on menstruation because times are changing. Sensitive research approaches and methodologies such as the participatory research model that we have followed can indeed yield a rich evidence-based data on MHM. We urge the esteemed policymakers, leaders, experts, specialists, researchers, scholars and implementing agencies present here to make use of this important moment and of course request you all to go through our findings. Data from our informants across the seven states indicates that while water, sanitation and hygiene, that is the wash goals are important, alongside women need functional toilets with clean and regular water supply. Effective disposal mechanisms for menstrual materials are indeed important from hygiene as well as environmental perspectives. Nonetheless, equally significant is the need to ensure a steady supply of clean menstrual absorbance to those who cannot afford these beyond their school years. Finally, while it is important to maintain regular MHM products and supplies to EAMW living in rural and other impoverished zones in normal times, it is also all the more important to cover the menstrual needs of women who live in remote areas that become cut off owing to seasonal occurrences such as the monsoons or those living in disaster prone zones. Thank you. Thank you. So that was the details of why to have mixed methodologies. Yeah. Yeah. So our, our uh, informants altogether from the seven state has been six two four eight. Out of them, the in-depth interviews we have done for four eight three nine uh, respondents. 56 FDGs into 10 uh, areas, uh, 10 places is equal to 560. Yes, I'm finishing in one minute, yeah. And uh, uh, key interviews of 168, MPNS uh, 681, 
that brings us to 6248. So these were the few details. I have already got a warning. I have to finish it now. So I'll just say the summary. We couldn't give, uh, we couldn't present the findings because each state has huge findings and huge suggestions, which we could not present. So kindly go through the report. You have been given the QR code. Please decode that and have that. You can write to us anytime. We are all, I understand we are all there in this movement and any query, we will learn together. I don't think that we can answer all the query, but we will learn together. So that's how the, this is the structure of the report. Begins with the ex executive summary, which is there in your bag. Introduction and methodology. Seven states chapters are very, very separate. And lastly, the final inferences and way forward. Okay, thank you. Thank you so very much for giving me a good hearing. Thanks. Thank you so much, Nirjal, ma'am, for taking so much hardship for writing this report from all of you. Because it's a very hard task for girls and for the women to spoke about this all this. So it's a big clap for ma'am and for her team members and for, in fact, Sulap Sanitation Movement also. Uh, now the time has come. We are waiting for this momentous occasion for the release of the report. So I request all the dignitaries on the dais to kindly release the report, combating the silence from menarche to menopause. And I request Mr. Praveenji, Ms. Dipali ji, Mr. Pratik to kindly take a copy of yours. Book is already here. Thank you so much. Now I request Honorable Professor Shiva Kamiji for the keynote address and she is the chairperson and professor from Center for Health and Social Science, Tata Institute of Social Science, Mumbai. So please give a huge round of applause for her. Thank you so much. Dear esteemed guests on the dais, advocates for women's health, researchers, ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor, absolutely an honor to stand before you today as we gather to celebrate the release of the Sulab's report that promises to transform the discourse around menstruation and menopause in the unique context of India. I stand here with a sense of excitement recognizing the importance of the conversation we are about to embark on. The release of the report is a milestone in the journey towards breaking the silence, challenging stigmas, and fostering a society that embraces the natural cycles of uh, girls' and women's life. Before we dwell in the heart of the matter, I want to share a personal reflection. As someone who has witnessed the impact of social norms on women's health, this report and the research that the report brings to you resonates deeply with me. It speaks to the experiences of countless women, including me, who have navigated the intricate landscape of menstruation and menopause against a backdrop of cultural expectations often masked with mystery and silence. Through this study, Sulab has undertaken a monumental task, unraveling the threats of culture, biology, and society to present a comprehensive nature of girls' and women's experiences. This report, I believe, offers a nuanced understanding that transcends the stereotypes and foster empathy. The report provides a roadmap for understanding women's physiological changes during menstruation and menopause. By demystifying the science behind these processes, I hope it empowers girls and women to take control of their health, encouraging informed choices, and dispelling the myths that may have persisted for generations and generations. From the workplace to educational institutions, from familial dynamics to societal expectations, women and girls are confronted with challenges during the natural process of life. By shedding light on these issues in the report, we are better equipped to advocate for 
supportive environments that recognize and celebrate the diversity of girls and women's experience. As we celebrate the release of this transformative work, let us recognize our collective responsibility and power to propel this conversation forward. I think all of us who have gathered here are positioned in a better place to drive this conversation forward. Let us, let us be the voice that challenges the status quo, the advocates who promote for education, and allies who stand beside every single girl and women who navigate their natural cycles in their life. I extend my heartfelt congratulations to Mr. Kumar, Ms. Neeraja, and the team behind this important study for your dedication, courage, and commitment in bringing this important work to life. And I was closely associated with this research behind advising how to go about this. With that, I take a sense of pride. May this report catalyze change, sparking conver conversations that reverberate far beyond this room, inspire a society where girls and women can embrace their natural cycles with pride, understanding, and support. I feel so privileged to be part of this momentous occasion and the report. Together, let us pave the way for future where menstruation and menopause are not whispered in hushed tones, but celebrated as integral aspects of women's journey and their womanhood. And I hope Sulab and everybody here who gathered use this report to advocate for girls and women's well-being around India. Thank you so much for giving this opportunity to that. Thank you, Professor Shiva Kami uh, for enlightening this uh, occasion and for enlightening and focusing the insight points of this report. And now I had request Honorable Kumar Dilip, sir, President Sulab International Social Service Organization, to kindly come and to be the way forward, please. Ladies and gentlemen, I would first like to thank everyone present here to coming to this important event today. As you know, Sulab is known for work on WASH globally and based on our outreach and experience. We did an extensive research titled State of Menstrual Hygiene Management in India Combating the Silence from Menarche to Menopause across 14 districts across seven states. The research is extremely important this time when the government of India and the leadership of the Prime Minister Mr. Narendra Modi has made subject of MHM an important policy issue. The research brings into force several harmful cultural practices like shame, stigma, and silence around periods which adversely impacts women's health. MHM is a multifaceted issue, and our study shows the needs to address it in a holistic manner. I also believe the MHM and women's health should include men and boys we are now designing our advocacy and behavioral change program to involve men and boys. We are doing MHM programs in several states that focus on women's financial inclusion. Going forward, we like to develop programs that tackle stigma and shame around period. We are in discussion with develop to develop specific MHM and sanitation program. Finally, I'd like to... I'd like to take a small step in this that all female staff on the first day of period will, will have their leave from now onwards. As you know, research fulfills an important knowledge gap and I am optimistic that study will inform policymakers, researchers and those working in MHM and guide them towards adopting programs that addresses one of the vital needs or well-being of women and girls in this country. I take this opportunity to congratulate the research team for producing this outstanding study. Sapir. Do this. Press this. Yeah, just a second. So one of the things that everyone has been asking me, how do you get access to this report? Now this report is quite voluminous, but what we have done is that now this report is available online. So the QR code for this report is available. It uh, has been distributed. It's also on the book. I would just now request uh, the president to 
launched their website, Sulab MHM. Now, designed by our media partner, 26, 26 Creative Agency. Now, why do we have this website at the first place? Now, this website will serve as a repository of knowledge, as a knowledge hub. Not just our own knowledge, but any kind of research, any kind of advocacy, any kind of program implementation in India and around the world. We have the resource section here. Now, that resource section has got reports which are available in public domain. Anyone who wants to do research in this area, or for research uptake purposes, it can serve as a one-stop platform on MHM. It's designed by us, but it's for everyone. Everyone and whoever wants to work on MHM, if you have a blog, if you have a research study, you are very welcome to contribute to this website. If you go down on this website, we have also highlighted some of our programs. Programs means the solutions. We have done our study, but we are also into programs. Two states here, Maharashtra and Haryana, very different kinds of programs. In Haryana, we have an implemented MHM project led by our uh, program officer. We have been working with school children and we're doing community by tax, uh, focusing on behavior change. In Maharashtra, we have been working on building capacity of local organizations. You'll be pleased to know the paths that we have been producing in Maharashtra are being distributed for free to the victims of domestic violence, which kind of shows the intersectional areas. And if you further go down, state-wise, you can download this report. If you're from a specific state, if you want to just read about your state, you can just go there. But the entire report is available for download on this website. Thank you so much. Thanks. Hello, can you hear? Yeah, okay. Now we'll have a short session of question answers and open house discussion. It'll be about for 10, 12 minutes. And maybe we can have about three, four questions or so. Starting with Indra Chakrabarti. We'd like to have some comments from you, please, madam. Uh, Mike. Mike. Yeah, can I go up here? Can I speak from here? Huh? I'll come there. It's easy. I'll come there. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to give comments on this excellent report. Uh, before I comment on the report, just a few lines on how I feel standing here today. It's been a long journey for me with Sulab as Dr. Patagos Iglu's friend. Had a huge camaraderie and friendship with him for the last 45 years. As Pankaji mentioned, <laughs> the first, uh, first ever biogas plant uh, was made in Patna in 7980 which uh, first ever in India and possibly this part of the world, which lighted the entire Gandhi Maidan. So that was remarkable. But I'm very happy to see in one way I'm sad that in a Sula program, Dr. Patek, his Patek Sam, as I called him, is not here. But on the other hand, I'm extremely happy to see Kumar Dilip is taking it forward so well, taking on new initiatives, uh, making new progresses, which is extremely important. He's modernizing, which is very, very important, keeping the traditions alive. It's extremely happy. I'll just make a couple of points on the report. I've made a couple of very short points. I think it's a remarkable study in many ways, because not only you've taken up the most difficult areas of aspirational districts and other vulnerable districts, but also very vulnerable women you have targeted like women who sell things in open markets, have no toilets, women who are in tea gardens, have no access, women who are bricklayers. So I think you've not only gone into very difficult areas, but on individually to women who have a lot of hardship in life. 
to go into where menstrual management is concerned. I think this is a remarkable thing that you took on, number one. Number two, as you, everybody mentioned, you've taken adolescents to menarche women. Nobody talks of menarche women. You've even taken menopausal women into consideration, even women who had a hysterectomy. So I think it's a very remarkable journey of taking all kinds of women have any kinds of menstrual or any kind of gynecological implications. So I think that's a very, very remarkable thing. You've added wash to menstruation, which is very needed. As we know that personal hygiene is a very, very important thing. It's a very important thing because it controls not only, uh, it's not a social aspect, you man manage social and technical issues together. Because we know that uh, you've talked of privacy, other things I'm not going into, but diseases, so many diseases, by the uterine infections, AIDS. I was on the World AIDS Day, I was here again for an associate meeting, and we all talk of how important personal hygiene for a girl to menopausal women is to prevent AIDS. You don't get infected if you have a healthy personal hygiene, a healthy internal system. So these are very even hepatitis B, and things like you know diseases we don't ever link are linked to proper personal hygiene. I think that's a very, very important that you've taken on. Infertility, birth compl complications, all are involved into personal hygiene and menarche. So I think these issues you also you have not touched upon, but I think these are very, very important issues which your report already touches upon. And lastly, I would say that you're following the WHO guidelines totally. What WHO has four guidelines, which says educate girls, Give them positivity on men's menarche. It's a very, very normal thing to have menstruation. Give positivity. Give access to proper sanitary equipments like pads. You've also discussed on how to store them, how to dispose them, and how not to feel ashamed of how to keep it in the school or in the house. And thirdly, running water into toilets. I think that's something Sulab has been doing for years. So I think this report, this work has touched upon many issues in a very multifarious way, in a multifarious way. Many of things you have not even realized possibly that you have touched upon. So I think these are very, very important things. I think I'm very, very happy to see that Sulab has sort of proliferated so much into the things like this. I wish you all the best to Kumar Dilip and his team here to take Sulab forward <laughs> to greater heights. I feel more, I've known them for the last 45 years. I, to see him sitting here is a great pleasure, great honor, a great happiness for me. So God bless everyone. I'm extremely happy to be here. Thank you. We'll take a few more questions or discussion points. Would you like to speak? Yes, please. Mike. Hi, this is Shobhna Jain. I happens to be president of, besides journalist, happens to be president of Indian Women Press Corps. There is one question, actually, I want to say that Dr. Pathak's program was connected to Sulabka, with IWPC. I have two small questions, if I may ask. एक तो ये आप लोगों ने कहा अभी कि men folk and boys उनको भी इस प्रोग्राम से जोड़ा जाएगा जो कि हमारे यहाँ इतना टैबू है कि उसके बारे में लोग बात भी नहीं करना चाहते तो इसके बारे में थोड़ा सा एलेब्रेट करें आप और दूसरा ये कि इस टाइप के जो पैर्स वगैरह हैं ऑर्फनेज गर्ल्स के जो ऑर्फनेज होते हैं या डाउन टर्डन जो सोसाइटी के लिए जो स्कूल्स होते हैं उसमें आप लोग डिस्ट्रीब्यूट करते हैं या ऐसा कोई प्लान है कि उसमें भी डिस्ट्रीब्यूट करें थैंक्स आई रिक्वेस्ट निजा जी टू आंसर दें या थैंक यू यू सेड हाउ टू वी वी सेड दैट कुमार जी सेड दैट हाउ टू वी आर वी हैव अ प्लान टू इंक्लूड मेन एंड � uh, in the schools because Sulab has its own school and there are regular training program goes with girls and boys both okay now as I said when I started okay, more than the training and capacity building now we'll get into behavioral changes okay that journey has to grow so after this this when you go through the report you'll come to know how many programs will come out from there. And the most important programs are going to be training and behavioral change. For that behavioral change, 
Maybe we need a huge media. Maybe we need many more conferences now. Maybe we need many more roundtables now. Uh, maybe in school, maybe in colleges, maybe youth associations. So those are some of the ways. And uh, then as we move ahead, we will concretize our program because that experience is also you evolve from your experiences. So when we go from school to colleges to youth association and all that, uh, I think, uh, not I think, I'm sure we will develop our program with them and we'll do a very constructive and positive reach out to them. Uh, Shiva Kami, would you want to put through? Yeah. See, um, I've been working on menstrual hygiene since 2011 and one of the things I personally as an expert like to break is that this is not women's issue. We need to have our men and boys into the thing to think that this is natural. So they could be friends with their uh, classmates and they could actually help them if they, are, if they see a, uh, their own peer sustaining and not shame them. And a whole lot of research has shown that the boys have absolutely no idea. The men who are married absolutely have no idea about uh, uh, what is menstruation and what are the complications that women face. And more so, I think one of the beauty of this particular report is that it covers the menopause actually. And women don't feel comfortable talking to men about um, the menopausal issues. These are all the men, women who are married and who have spent their life probably 20, 30 years with their own husbands, but yet they don't like to talk about it because they, the men don't understand. I think in my mind, if, if Sulab, an organization like Sulab, commits to actually bring men and boys into the umbrella, that's something really commendable. And I don't see many people doing that. So congratulations, uh, Kumar, actually, uh, for that. I think the first thing we want to start with that, it's natural and you, you could actually be not shaming your own colleagues and peers if, if you see them strain, actually. You could just see how you can facilitate them, how they can, you can make them feel comfortable with. I think that way I would like to really compliment the organization for committing on this particular day to bring men and boys into the umbrella. Thank you so much. Uh, mess, sorry. Sorry. Under I will. I will just talk about personal experience of men and boys. I think जो मेरी मेरी वाइफ नहीं होती हैं तो मेरी बेटी को मुझसे इस बात करने को एक झिझक नहीं होती कि हम अपना एक्सपीरियंस को बताएं दो बार उसके पीरियड के फर्स्ट डे जो मैंने आज स्टाफ को छुट्टी की बोली फर्स्ट डे पीरियड इज वेरी क्रिटिकल और उसको एक दो बार इशू हुआ तो हम हॉस्पिटल लेके गए सो आई कैन से फ्रॉम माई एक्सपीरियंस हाउ इफ वाइफ इज नॉट देर वाइ मदर इज नॉट देर यू शुड बी हजबेंड टॉक टू योर फादर बिकॉज दैट्स द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट डे where things can go wrong if you're not taken care of. So that's one thing I have said from my side of view. But as Professor Shivkami and Nija Ji has said, it takes time, but we need, we are on the job, and this is a learning curve for us as well. And we are taking it forward and to include this conversation with men and boys. Thank you. एक्चुअली बहुत ही अजीब सा एक कोइंसिडेंस है कि यहाँ आने के पहले और पंकज का न्यूता पाने के पहले आई वाज इन भीमताल आई वाज इन टॉकिंग टू दिस एनजीओ मिसेस आशा शर्मा जो नैनीताल में ये उत्तरांचली औरतों के साथ मेंस्ट्रुअल हाइजीन के बारे में प्रचार कर रही हैं ऑल ऑन हर ओन उनके दो लड़के हैं एंड हस्बेंड एंड शी हैड कम टू मीट मी एंड शी सेड हमने तो शुरू से अपने लड़कों को और हस्बैंड को इंक्लूड करा इस कॉन्वर्सेशन में सो वाइल दे शी वेंट ऑन अबाउट हर वर्क दे इज दैट एवरी थिंग दे वर सिटिंग दे मुझे एम्बेरसमेंट हो रहा था क्योंकि मैं तो एक जनरेशन पीछे की हूँ वेर वी वर नॉट सपोज टू डिस्कस दीज इशूज विद अदर वेमेन एंड विथ मैन आई मीन इट वॉज नो नो टॉक्स सो दिस इज द वे एज दिलीप जी ने कहा है कि हम लोगों को दे इट इट्स विद इन द फैमिली टबू खत्म होता है विद इन फैमिली एंड दिस लेडी शी जस्ट आई मीन इट वॉज सो ओपन फॉर मी इट वॉज वेरी सरप्राइजिंग बट दैट्स द वे टू गो थैंक यू हेलो माई नेम इज नंदिता आप ही के प्रश्न का एक जवाब है इसमें थोड़ा सा क्योंकि मैं स्पिरिचुअलिटी से मैं स्ट्रॉलॉजर हूँ और रिलीजन हमारा इम्बाइब बहुत ज़्यादा है जब हम टैबू की बात करते हैं 
तो यहीं पे मेंशन करना चाहूँगी कि तमिलनाडु में स्पेसिफिकली देर सर्टेन विलेजेस जहाँ पे जब बच्ची का फर्स्ट मैंस्टोरेशन होता है तो पूरा सेलिब्रेशन होता है और लड़की के मामा एक घर बनाते हैं कोकोनट से और मैंगो लीव से और उसका पूरा प्रोसेशन निकलता है उनको देवी की तरह सेलिब्रेट किया जाता है सो इट इज़ द माइंड सेट दैट वेदर दिस नेचुरल थिंग दैट इज़ कमिंग अप शुड बी सेलिब्रेटेड बिकॉज ये जो चीज़ है ये फर्टिलिटी का सिंबल है हमारी जितनी भी आज जनता है या हमारी नेक्स्ट पीढ़ी है वो इसी फर्टिलिटी के बेसिस में है तो ये शक्ति का सिंबल है माँ कामख्या है उनको हम सेलिब्रेट करते हैं तो आज के बच्चों में ये जागृत करने की आवश्यकता ज़्यादा है कि क्या ये सेलिब्रेशन का एस्पेक्ट है या ये टैबू का एस्पेक्ट है और अगर ये टैबू शुरू हुआ तो क्यों हुआ कब हुआ किस लिए हुआ हमने क्या कुछ दूसरे ही संस्कृति के आने की वजह से पर्दा सिस्टम कर लिया तो इसलिए हमने ये टैबू लगाने शुरू करे आई थिंक वी नीड टू ब्रेक दोज नॉर्म्स दूसरा चीज़ स्परिचुअलिटी की ही बात करते हैं रिलीजन की बात करते हैं जब हम ध्यान में जाते हैं या हम मेडिटेशन में जाते हैं या कुंडलिनी जागरण की अवस्था में जाते हैं तो जो स्त्रियाँ मैंस्टोरेट करती हैं उस वक्त में जब वो मेडिटेट करती हैं जहाँ बोला जाता है कि आप मंदिर में ना जाएँ या आप इस स्थान पर ना जाएँ उसके उल्टा जब आप उस वक्त में मेडिटेट करते हैं आपके ऊपर शक्ति का इतना ज़्यादा आवाहन होता है इतनी ज़्यादा एनर्जीज आती हैं कि आप एक हायर लेवल पे जाने के लिए बिल्कुल सक्षम रहते हैं सो इट इज़ जस्ट द चेंज ऑफ माइंड सेट दैट वी नीड टू डू एंड आई थिंक सुलभ इज डूइंग एन अमेजिंग वर्क टुडे एंड देर द काइंड ऑफ स्टेप दैट यू ऑल हैव टेक एन एंड डन इट आई थिंक जस्ट अवेयरनेस दैट नीड्स टू बी बिल्ड अप एंड थैंक यू first of all uh, my best wishes to surav i met uh, watak sahab many times aur uh, uh, maine aapse dilip ji se kahan puchna hai ki ab kaise unki journey ko forward le ja rahe hain kya plan kar rahe hain matlab uh, madam ne bataya hai but uh, main janna chahti hu this sulab ka itihas to ab 53 saal ka hai उसमें जो शुरुआत हुई थी वो यू नो सैनिटेशन हमेशा कोर एरिया रहा है उसका पानी पे काम काफ़ी हुआ फिर आपने देखा स्कूल में काफ़ी काम हुआ फिर विडोज़ का प्रोग्राम हुआ फिर स्कैमेंजर्स का प्रोग्राम है ऊषा जी हैं जिनको पद्मश्री भी मिला उसमें तो ये तो ये तो जर्नी जो कंटिन्यू थी वो रहेगी जिसमें मैं सिर्फ ये ऐड करूँ तीन एरिया जो हम लोग फर्दर फोकस कर रहे हैं एक तो नेचुरल हाइजीन पे जो ऑलरेडी रिलेटेड प्रोडक्ट हेल्थ से है जो काम ऑलरेडी चलता रहा है उसके बाद स्केलिंग अप की बात दूसरा एक हमारा फूड सिक्योरिटी का प्रोग्राम है और तीसरा जो एरिया क्योंकि एक है प्लास्टिक जो हमने आज स्वच्छ भारत अभियान टू में आपने देखा वेस्ट मैनेजमेंट पे बात हो रही है प्लास्टिक डिग्रेड नहीं होने का नहीं इट्स बिकम अज न्यूसेंस एवरीवेयर पटली इफ यू गो टू विलेज वहाँ पर कोई भी सिस्टम नहीं है कि आप कूड़े कचरे को ले जाते तो आप गांव में जाइए तो आप देखेंगे कि आ, सारे रोड के चारों तरफ अब सिर्फ प्लास्टिक ही प्लास्टिक है क्योंकि हमारा खाना भी प्लास्टिक में आता है अब आप उसको ये हम नहीं कह सकते उसको तुरंत रिप्लेस कर दिया जाए पॉसिबल नहीं पर प्रयास ये रहेगा कि इसमें रिप्लेस कैसे किया जाए और एक चीज़ हम लोगों ने प्रोफेसर कामी और मैं आपने भी से बात हुई थी हमारी कि हम लोग कोशिश कर रहे हैं कि बायोडिग्रेडेबल सैनिटरी पैड कैसे बने इस रिसर्च का इसमें टाइम लगेगा क्योंकि आप अभी देखेंगे किसी भी सैनिटरी पैड में एक एटलीस्ट एक लेयर ऑफ प्लास्टिक अभी भी है जो आज के समय हम ये नहीं कर सकते आप उसको हटा लिए फिर वो यूजफुल नहीं होगा पर प्रयास हमारा रहेगा कि तीन चार पाँच सालों में एक सिस्टम ऐसा है कि प्लास्टिक का जो यूसेज है अगर सैनिटरी पैड में हम हटा सकें तो इट विल बी ए ग्रेट you know when for us not for sulab i think society wise uh, government ke through aap jisse bhi baat karenge aaj waste margin mein plastic is bahut bada factor to ye teen cheeze jo hum log naya shuru kar rahe hain naya in the aap related hi cheeze hain par ye baaki mere pita ji ki jo journey thi wo to usko hum usko kya shabdon mein aap bayan nahi kar sakte jo unhone kaam kiya hai bas itna hi keh sakte hain thank you Yeah, uh, congratulations, Sulam. 
Uh, I'm Bini Yadav from South Asia Integrated News Network, and I'm uh, heading the editorial there. And we have a digital platform with Asian newsmakers, and we focus on these issues of development, gender, uh, education, etc., from South Asian region. So when we were talking about that, we we, we talk about tab taboo related to uh, menstrual health and hygiene, and we we fail to talk, and we are shy of talking, as Shobhana ji said. Uh, like those who are educated, those who represent this educated class, you know, like, like the, the, my contemporaries, they talk. As you said, uh, Kumar Dilip ji, that you know, your daughter can come to you in absence of your uh, wife. So similarly, all those educated urban Indians have the simil similar pattern. But the question here remains is how those do downtrodden class, um, is there any outreach program of Sulab? to tell them these class of like men and boys of that class and the women and the girls of that class how to come up with this inhibition inhibition of talking about this menstrual issues that i hope shobhana ji that's what your question was and similar is my question as well thank you so much maine aap kaha ki ek learning ka hamare liye hai aur neeja ji aur professor kami is pe further kaam kar rahe hain और जो हमारा नेक्स्ट आइडिया ये है कि हम लोग फेबरी या मार्च में एक राउंड टेबल कॉन्फ्रेंस करेंगे जिससे हमारे पास बहुत समय होगा इस और से टॉपिक्स पे हम बात कर सकते हैं जो आपका कहना है बिल्कुल सही है कि शहरों में आज लोग बात कर भी लेते हैं लेकिन गांव में लेकिन हम आपने देखा होगा इस रिसर्च में जो हमारा ध्यान है वो गाँव की तरफ ज़्यादा है इसमें पता चला कि आपको एक्शन महिलाओं को क्या इशूज़ हैं इसमें आप देखिए कितनी जगह जो नंदिता जी ने बात की कि रिलीजियस प्रैक्टिस भी बहुत आड़े आते हैं और वो बिकॉज ऑफ रिलीजन एथनिसिटी जो भी है परिवार में ही नहीं चाहते कि आप इस पर बात ना करें या उनको उससे फ़ायदा नहीं मिलता जो फाइनेंशियल इंक्लूजन की मैंने बात की हम लोग के रिसर्च में कहीं कहीं पता चला है कि फैमिली पैसे अपनी औरतों को देते नहीं कि आपको सैनिटरी पैड खरीदना है ये इतनी हालत ये है कि जब आपको वो सोचती है तो ठीक है हर हर महीने होता है क्या बड़ी बात पर वी ऑल नो कि इन रेयर केसेज यू नो जो आज का मिनिस्ट्रल में आप क्लीन इज हाइजीन की बात हुई आप सिस्ट होता है वो होता है इट कैन बी फेटल इन सम केसेस इफ यू कीप कंटिन्यू दिस प्रैक्टिस अन हाइजीन प्रैक्टिस फॉर फ्यू ईयर्स वी नो इट कैन बी फेटल इट्स इन रेयर केसेस बट इट कैन बी सो हम ये कह रहे हैं कि ये भी हमारा और भी चीज़ें जो आप कह रही हैं हमारा और भी आउटरीच प्रोग्राम बनाना है ये तो हमारा फर्स्ट एक है कि सॉरी रिपोर्ट को रिलीज की है इस पर जितने भी हमने बातें की हैं और भी इस पर काम करेंगे और हमारा प्रयास ये है कि अगले दो तीन चार सालों में विथ अदर स्टेक होल्डर्स और लोकल एन के थ्रू ये ऑल इंडिया हम काम करेंगे रिपोर्ट का और लेकिन नई नई बातें जो इस रिपोर्ट में आप देंगे डिस्ट्रिक्ट वाइज स्टेट वाइज इश्यूज अलग अलग हैं जो तमिलनाडु में इश्यूज हैं वो शायद बिहार में नहीं जो शायद आसाम में वो बिहार में नहीं वो बिहार में वो आसाम में नहीं तो बहुत से फैक्टर्स हैं क्योंकि देखिए है कि जो सोशल काम होता है वो आप सोसाइटी को लेके चल सकते हैं और आप जानते हैं इसमें चेंज में थोड़ा समय लगता है बहुत आसान नहीं है कि आप एक दिन बोलिए और कल बदलाव हो जाए पर ये हमारा सतत प्रयास है कि इस पे हम फोकस मैंने आपको इसे बताया तीन एरिया में फोकस है और उस पर आगे that uh, we are talking about combating silence hmm? what silence what is that silence about hmm? uh, where the silence is uh, when there is a menstrual problem uh, where does that pvtg women or a fisherman from ramnathapuram or a adolescent from shivakasi or uh, you talk about any other communities from uh, the muslims from uh, new uh, district uh, what type of silence are they facing Uh, is the problem for them is a real problem or is it something else so where the silence lies all these questions are answered with data into this report this reports will give you a seed of opportunities of how to break that silence and i think with that we need to come up with actions 
we need to come up with policies. Uh, and that is where we support the government, the government of India, the Niti Aayog, uh, to just add on, uh, out of the 112 aspirational districts, we have taken 10 aspirational districts, which is 10% of the total aspirational districts. And we have, as ma'am really, uh, rightly mentioned, so we have covered fishermen, we have covered uh, the tea garden workers, we have covered uh, uh, the PVTGs from Chhattisgarh and Assam, uh, we have covered the areas which are 24-7 cut off in Bihar, in Khagaria district, where we need to go by boat for nearly some 30 to 45 minutes and then interview these people, uh, Musa, her communities. They have all, and their silence are all different. So we need to understand what the silence is, how they practice, what is the knowledge level, what is their perspective within the family and within themselves. Is Sabka's jo sawal ka jawab hai, isme data ki sahib diya hai. Isko padna hai, isko actionable karna hai, aur isko aage badana hai. Thank you. Sorry, just a short question taking up from what you said. I am Dr. Charu Wali Khanna, Advocate Supreme Court, former member of National Commission for Women. I have been working in menstrual health issues. My specific is a short question. Have, we're talking about attitudinal change and combating silence. This culture and glorification of silence is over because young girls are anxious, they're enthusiastic, and they are very rebellious. Irrespective of whether they're from whichever community caste, with social media, you know, young girls even from deprived sections of society are quite vocal. So my specific question is that when you talk about boys and girls and parents, you cannot do it individually, family-wise. Have you made a recommendation that it should be included in the educational system? Because with the right to education, most, I would say 80% of children are in school, irrespective of their educational system. That's a good question. Um, uh, I think if you, I was part of the 2015 uh, menstrual hygiene policy that was released um, by the government and now the new policy is up for the uh, comment. One of the things the government actually did was to bring in <coughs> menstrual hygiene family into that uh, because the silence was around always the girls and, and we bombard the girls and women. But, Unfortunately, unfortunately, I mean, you are saying that the girls are open and, and talking and, and they are actually more rebellious, but that's not the situation once they attain the men menarche. The, all the shyness and everything comes in and they can't even talk to their mother. And on situations when they talk to mother, the mother herself is ignorant. And mother herself has a lot of myths and uh, misconceptions. So, on the one hand, your school is teaching you to kind of these are all scientific and, and you can do all of that but then when they go back their home and they're confronted with the what the school taught you the science behind that uh, I think I mean that 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 way I, I really appreciate that um, Sulab is thinking about bringing the boys and men I think we move to now next level as family that would help us with actually going forward uh, yes it's important to bring that into the curriculum and and we have I mean I have undertaken a study with UNICEF funding and often, often the subject of the menstruation and around uh, life, life skills, uh, it depends on the who the teacher is. Uh, whether the teacher is married or unmarried. If the teacher is married, the way that that section is taught is very different. But if the teacher is unmarried, the, the way that section is taught is very different. But while the government already has component in the um, uh, educational system, in the, from I think it's six, 600 onwards, but what is important is that again breaking the silence. And I would always go back to breaking the silence. Breaking the silence for the girls, breaking the silence for the men and bo boys educating them that it is natural process and I know we have come long, long, like I remember doing the study on 2013 and 14 with the support from the UNICEF from there to here and Ausulab actually committing to bringing men and boys into the picture. We have come long way in terms of menstrual hygiene but we still have a long way to go. One of the things as a scholar I would like to actually place it on the record to everybody is that if you look at the menstrual hygiene management, um, I would say the entire gamut of the research studies you will notice that it's always menstruation comes in. But we forget about the women who are actually in the menopause. Women in the menopause go, go through us 
difficult situation as the young adolescent go through, if not more. But unfortunately, our research, there are not many researchers, not many studies, not many programs for these women. I think that's another compliment that for the entire research team that they want to include the menopausal women's uh, experiences because their experience is also very, very valuable for us to go forward. So in that sense, we are better positioned with the evidence that it is coming from. So hopefully we go from here to advocacy and step up actually to bring in the programs and policies. Um, first of all, big congratulations on this lovely report. And, and I've been hearing some of it uh, from Neerja. Um, I think on the topic of, oh, first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Madhuri Tanand. I'm a film writer, director, and I also have an app for women's safety called Free for Safety. So some of the issues that you're raising around silence are extremely interesting because I think that is perhaps the one single largest hurdle to development, especially women's development. Um, the silence is something that is mostly um, uh, incumbent on women, you know, for so many things, like even for safety. One of the biggest barriers that we found between women expressing this sense of feeling unsafe is that they are taught to not talk about it. So actually, we would, we would solve many things if we broke the silence. And I have found, and I'm sure that you know, there are so many um, sort of uh, lovely uh, people here, and you all, all, all would also know that. But I think communication is key. And I think that um, you know, in, in, that, in those terms, you know, whether it's film, whether it's social media, whatever it is, I think outreach is, would be really uh, handy in this case. So it's not really a question, it's more a comment. And really to thank you for, for doing this wonderful work. Yeah, I understand when you said that, because we can't reach out to single women. There has to be some voice coming from up and from coming from somewhere and be loud about that. Like, you know, so yes, we need media. Uh, we welcome, not welcome, we need media. Okay, so to, to strengthen our voice and to take our voices in very contextual shape to all the areas which are unreached. I mean, we have been to the area where women, they don't know uh, that whether it happens after 27 days or it happens every month or it happens after six months. They don't know. And in between so much of water flows, do you, you, are you getting it, what I'm trying to say? So the, the, so, so the risk to the women, what kind of a thing women they go through. Yes, media is most welcome. Yes. Yeah, this report uh, won't have been really possible because I have only, only been the gatherer and Kumarji have been the supporter. Uh, my esteemed lead researcher, you met her on the video when she was talking. My esteemed, esteemed member, Praveen Pawar, who was the program manager, who was the program manager and I strictly told him, this is menstruation, don't come in front. <laughs> Help us from behind. Okay, so he maintained that in the larger benefit of women's cause. So yes, thank you. Uh, my another esteemed and very respected uh, expert, Dipali Yakundi, who is a research analyst. She, you will not believe, we ha all these data she has coordinated with partners only online. After the data has been collected, 6,000 odd data and talking to each one of them online. Can you imagine the kind of a thing she has, uh, uh, energy she has gone and her mind has gone in doing the sampling size and unquestionable integrity. Because these are very sensitive things. The data should not leak before releasing. Data should be with us. So unquestionable, yes, we had our problems, we had our fights, we had our arguments, but finally the child is born, a healthy child is born. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So yes, Dipali, thank you so very much. And my very, very loving colleague, Pratik Sunkar, who, who really coordinated, who really coordinated the whole process right from uh, grassroots organization to me, to Praveen, to Dipali, to Bobby, to even Shiva Kamiji, even to Gaurav. Okay, so all this uh, he had coordinated, but flawlessly. 
completely flawless looking at nay madam even i'll tell him to phone kar lo madam 8 baj gaya i don't think this is the right time to call i'll call tomorrow that kind of a patient thank you pratik thank you so much my very very esteemed colleague sutirtha with all this yes and no's okay he maneuvered the thing so beautifully within the organization because i was relatively new and he knew everything so thank you for making uh, uh, thank you for making it possible and uh, us ma is the youngest colleague he still studying he still doing his uh, post graduation uh, in political science and he came on board now he has graduated after our report he is doing phd <laughs> So Uves, uh, Uves was the one like you know, we were really in short of uh, people, and the point came we we never got anybody and we were running out of time, and Uves said and the first thing when we were sitting in the Bobby's house and he wrote I told him कि मेरे को एक पेज लिखकर के दिखाओ कैसा लिखते हो and he wrote that page and I said oh wow we I I got my thing what I wanted thank you Uves thank you for so much thank you studies uh, Uves is studying in Delhi University he is based in Delhi. Uh, Dipali is based in Pune. Praveen is based in Pune. Me, myself and uh, Pratik, we are based in Mumbai. So this was the team. And Bobby, who was in Delhi, but now she has gone abroad. She is in Sweden, educating her child. So yes, this was the team. It's a very, very scanty team, which we could work out with, and it is shortest of the time. You, you will agree. You are a teacher. You are an academician. Uh, 14 months, 14 to 16 months, we deliver. Thank you. Thank you for being here. thank you so much nirja ma'am for uh, preparing all this thing and now i request uh, mrs monica jain chairperson sulab sanitation mission foundation to kindly extend her vote of thank please thank you niga a very good afternoon to all of you i would like to start with thanking the person because of whom we all are here that is our honorable founder late dr binteshwar pathak ji he got us here made this beautiful sula family it would not have been possible without his hard work efforts and guidance for sula to be what it is today further extending my gratitude to respected kumar dilip sir for his great strength support and guidance he provided us throughout the program it was his vision only that we have touched the most touching subject of every woman thank you very much sir i would like to thank shri pankaj jain sir for his coordination and valuable guidance he has stayed always with us professor shivakami madam who with her expertise and deep knowledge in subject helped us to keep our research on track thank you very much ma'am for all your valuable information you shared and data you shared with us i would like to extend this appreciation to madam nirja bhatnagar ji and her team for their untiring efforts to complete this research report and i again thank you nirja ji for beautiful presentation that gave us insight about the situation i would like to thank dr sutirtha for his help in communication and all social media support i would like to give my regards to all media persons here for their cooperation and timely presence i would like to acknowledge and thank each and every person who has put in efforts to make this program uh, successful because it would not have been possible without this team work aur ant mein maine socha to nahi tha but itna acha discussion hua to mera man kiya ek majru sultanpuri ji ki bahut achhi lines hain do jin saath main aap sabhi ko thanks dena chahungi jo ek beauty ek itna acha yahan par discussion hua ki main akela hi chala tha main akela hi chala tha jaani be manzil magar लोग आते गए और कारवा बनता गया तो ये जो कारवा हमारे साथ स्टेज से सिर्फ शुरू हुआ था मुझे लग रहा है ये बहुत अच्छा साइन है कि हम लोग इसको आगे लेके जाएंगे बहुत पॉजिटिव साइन है कि मुझे लग रहा है कि आने वाले सालों में हम इसके सक्सेस को एप्लीकेट करेंगे इन अदर स्टेट्स ऑल्सो विद दीज वर्ड्स एक दिल से बहुत स्नेह भरा धन्यवाद आप सबको बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद थैंक यू सो मच मोनिका जी और अब हम क्रम कार्यक्रम के अंत में आ गए पर कहते हैं ना अंत ही आरंभ है तो उसको कंप्लीट करते हैं विद आवर नेशनल एंथम सो कैंडली रिक्वेस्ट ऑल ऑफ यू टू कैंडली स्टैंड ऑन योर प्लेस प्लीज
जनगणमन अधिनायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता पंजाब सिंध गुजरात मराठा द्राविड उत्कल बंगा विंध्य हिमाचल यमुना गंगा उच्चल जलधि तरंगा तव शुभ नामे जागे तव शुभ आशीष मागे गाहे तव जय गाथा जन गण मंगल दायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे जय 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 हे Thank you and now I request all of you to kindly proceed for the lunch please